out to have a pod fire, but I'm not sure. I'm not really interested. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch this game and get interested. Yeah, so we've got uh, round one of tonight's uh, Super Pod, or Feature Pod, or whatever you want to call it. We de facto are calling it Super Pod for whatever reason. How about Pod All-Stars? Pod, pod All-Stars. Or Lost Legion All-Stars. It's Pod of uh, people that I could guarantee were going to be here this week. That's what happened. On Tuesday, that was people that I knew were coming. That's what it is. Um, so on the right, we've got Dave Snow. If you watched uh, earlier tonight, you saw him draft what ended up being a blue-red tempo deck with a lot of removal and the typical flyers that you would expect, as long with a pretty interesting uh, fire cat strategy, which is he's got a lot of those, he's got three of those four one. The Riga and yeah. fire cats. Yeah, but basically because he has this, uh, the, the, card, uh, the, the three power guy that gives all your, the other creature flying when it attacks. Mm. So they build around that to a certain extent. He also has a metric butt ton of uh, red removal. Two Flames of the Fire Brands, uh, a Chander's Outrage, and... Chander's Outrage. Wonderful limited card. And a Volcanic Geyser. More importantly, in this uh, game, looks like he stuck on two lands. His opponent, stream regular Garrett Meadows, who drafted a very uh, mana-rich rock deck. Uh, he's got a Doom Blade. He's got a uh, he's got multiple. He's got two of the new Land War Elves. He's got two of the Mana West Sliver, which is basically the Birds of Paradise mm -hmm. Sliver that we see in yep. play. And he's got a very dramatic high end. This would be very unfortunate if Dave just loses this uh, game because. Like it's out there. They just haven't put it on the table. They'll figure it out once the first time they uh, go to adjust the life. Dave, going to go ahead and offer up a trade here. Or what? What just happened there? Can you watch it? The Galathy and Firecat's pretty cool. Everyone, it looks like it should have haste, though. I wonder how many people are going to put it down and turn it sideways, because it looks, it's a Firecat, looks like it should be coming in on mm -hmm. turning play. Okay. Yep. The draft week are always, uh, it's always a little clunky logistically, but because it, it requires me moving the camera around, as you can see, the camera's not perfectly set up like I like it. Dave has entered his discard phase. That's always a tough one. Uh, D Garrett's deck, to be fair, is is, is pretty strong, uh, but it's not difficult to be an opponent on two lands. So. so there we see a Spore Mound playing a land to make a creature. There were two Spore Mounds that came around to Dave with like four and five cards left back to back in the last pack. Uh, I have no idea why they were still available at that point. It's not like Spore Mound is the best card in the format, and it's not the best green card by any means, but it's a very strong card and should never be that late. I think Garrett picked up both of them. And there we see the first of our mini fire cats. Mm -hmm. So th here's the thing about a fire cat. It's very fragile on attack. It's obviously not something that Dave showed up tonight thinking, I'm going to draft as many fire cats as I can. But it's very tough to attack favorably into the fire cat because yeah. it does kill a lot. Yes. It's a fairly good wall. Like three mana, four damage removal spell. Cinder wall, he, is that the old school Ravnica yeah. guy? Mm-hmm. Five, two or something like Here that. Here we see uh, Garrett is going to put in large on his Spore Mound. So the Spore Mound is now a 10-10 Trampler that must be blocked. Mm -hmm. So Dave's going to throw his Fire Cat in front. Uh, basically in large plays like a removal spell. Remove, remove the wor sacrifice the worst creature in your deck and take some damage. Uh, when your opponent casts in large and then attacks with one creature, Celestial Flare is very good, as I found out in the Sealed on Saturday. <laughs> um, but Dave's going to take a billion damage here. I'll let them sort out the uh, the number. A billion is a much more uh, precise term than a metric butt ton, which we've already seen. So Wait, is it, does Enlarge only pump the front? Yeah, the MTG bot doesn't have it in there, and I don't have a fat cut. 7-7, seven, seven, gets plus 7, plus 7, gains trample on a turn, it must be blocked as turn available. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but... I'm sure these guys can sort it out. It's another function of the uh, the pre or the uh, release day drafts is that it's very difficult to figure out what all the cards do. I mean, I did play with the majority of them at the pre-releases. As a time ebb comes down and puts the Brindle board back on top of Garrett's deck, so he's still going to take three here from this attack from all the one ones. 
Flames of the Fire might be fantastic, right? Yeah, before that thing shows up. Uh, is that the 3-1 Intimidate guy? Or the 3-2 uh, Intimidate? I don't know what that card is. We'll have to get confirmation from Garrett after the fact. Not that this is like super high stakes, but at some point Dave will probably consider just packing it in as opposed to showing uh, rest of his deck showing off. Garrett all the cards he has. Because the chances of, of Dave coming back from this spot are pretty slim. He does have two copies of Flames of the Firebrand, as we talked about, so he could three for one Garrett, but he's still going to face down that unknown card at the top, which is a Vampire Warlord, I believe. Oh, that's the uh, new uh, Blood Throne Vampire, right? No, that's Blood Baron. Oh, Blood Baron is the old barony vampire, if you remember. If, uh, if it's that guy, it's a 4-2, and you sack a creature regenerates it. Right. Uh, if it's that guy. It could be. I didn't play... Uh, the black cards in this set, other than the ones that I know about, uh, in terms of you know, Doom Blades and the whatnot, and the rares, are the ones I have the least experience with, having not played against those in the pre-release. Three mana for the Brindle board that Dave knew he had in his hands. We're going to remove something here. Ch uh, Volcanic Geyser is going to take out... Does that, mm -hmm. Does that remove it from combat, right? Yeah, so he's only going to take t uh, two down to three. So not really what Dave wants to be doing with the best card in his deck, but... I don't Flames know. of the Firebrand is his only chance right here, right? He's made a... Uh, Flames of the Firebrand probably not even good at this point either. He would need something to also clog up the ground. He would need Flames plus a blocker. That way he could chump the, uh, the black creature at the top and just take two from the boar. And he's going to pass back. Flames is a sorcery, right? Yes. I played in my queue, but I... I I don't know why I'm asking these questions. That one I know. <laughs> Both it and Arc Lightning are uh, Star Series. So there we see a Root Walla, not of the Basking variety. And Garrett's going to serve in with everybody. We see a Chandra's Outrage. Well, well, the same play again. We're going to try and fog the 4-2. Uh, and then uh, yeah. Garrett uh, correct, makes the correct play there, and we move on to game two. So it'll be interesting to see if Dave can muster a little bit better of a game when he draws more than two lands for the first ten, ten turns. But to be fair, Garrett's deck is pretty strong as well. It'll be interesting to see how these two match up in a fair game. Now I remember I forgot to put my... Uh... So it's really hard. You want to see the monstrosity I ended up drafting? Oh, absolutely. So you already finished? Uh, first, first round, not first game. So I'm waiting for the, the rest of them to finish up round two to begin. I like this guy. Yeah, what guy are we talking about, gentlemen? That's Vastwood Hydra. He's the Hydra, yes, and he, when he dies, he distributes his counters on these other creatures. He seems really, really good and limited. Boop, 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 boop. Doing this is hard. What are we talking about? We're looking at Joe Lewis's draft deck right here. He's running so, Joe, what was your first pack, first pick? Um, well, I hate to say that. I picked Burning Earth. Which is not good in this format, but there's nothing else in there that's exciting me out of that, and I'm just wondering about you. What's the best card in your deck? Uh, the Hydra and the three color. Oh, piece. Colonial Hydra? The, yeah, the Hydra. Fast, fast with Hydra. Not, Hydra. not the really good one. The uh -oh. regular rare. That's an it's an X cost, but it uh, when it dies, all the mana you put into it gets distributed on your tokens on your creatures. Okay. But yeah, the Colonial Hydra is probably I don't know. I think a card standard playable. So. Oh, it's definitely standard playable. Or at least Zach Leonga's going to play this at some point. So that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> that just means a card has been printed. That usually means it's a card that has over six converted mana costs. It's more than likely the sorcery. <laughs> or a weird artifact. This is a great card. I'm a big fan of Fire Shrieker right here, which is an old card that I am... Uh, what, was this, what was that reprinted from? Fire Shrieker. Mm, I don't remember. Was it a lore one block card? It's getting put into my new EDH deck I'm building, and so I mean, it's actually already in there, but it's neat they reprinted it. I like when they do I'm something. I'm sure the chat will figure out what that card was. I knew it was a, uh, I thought it was a reprint. I had that in my sealed pool as well at the pre-release. And it's very, uh, Double Strike is one of the strongest mechanics in Magic. Oh, absolutely. First Strike by itself is amazing. Double Strike is even better. And I was able to live the dream in the uh, pre-release sealed of having a 
flying creature with Mark of the Vampire and Fire Shrieker on it. Mm. Just gain a quick 10 life every turn. Surprisingly, I won that one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, can't I did leave, lose. I can't, leave, can't leave you pulled but it out. I, but as I follow up with that, I did lose a game uh, in round. Or I lost the match in round one, the third game, to beloved shop manager J B Roberts, who did a very similar thing to me, except on the three-two black uh, intimidate guy. Ah. So uh, the, the wizards always manages to find a way to print. As much as it, people hate them, there's always some kind of invisible stalker, butcher's cleaver combination yeah. in these sets where it's just like I now win the game because I drew these cards. And but like the witch stalker plus uh, mark of the vampire is like yeah. so good. Witch stalker plus any of the uh, creature enchantments is, is very good, and it's very frustrating that they continue to print these uh, hexproof cards. <laughs> Real quick question, Joe. You uh, you've got a couple slivers in your deck, but not a whole bunch. What's your was your just because they're on on color, or were you going slivers, or what was no, your? I was not going slivers. They were just on color. Like the, I have the, uh, the plus one, plus one, one, but he's just a two two bear for me. I needed something in that spot, and then I just have a high end finish rate of five five for seven. So what? So what do you think, Zach? Do you like do you like just throwing a couple slivers in someone's deck, or do you well, think you need a critical mass? Or what's your thought? It's entirely dependent on the sliver, like the Man West sliver, the the flying sliver. The, uh, the Vigilance, the Sentinel Sliver, which is Vigilance, all of the ones that cost, like, two or less, they all are functionally bears, and they all play fine by themselves. Okay. And then if you happen to have more than one Sliver out, it's gravy. Sure. But you can't play a card like Megantic Sliver, or Sliver Construct, unless you have a critical mass. Okay. Garrett is playing the two Mana West Slivers in his deck, simply because they make mana and let him cast yeah, I mean, five drops on turn four. They're basically... Oh, yeah. They're basically... The Muscle Sliver is the Grizzly Bear. And, I, I mean, you would play Grizzly Bears if you needed play. Absolutely. Absolutely. I played in, this, in my seal, and I, I apologize for keep referring to that, but that is my most experience with this format. Yeah. Uh, I played the Sentinel Sliver just just for... It was just a dude in my curve, you know? Needed a 2-2. Two -two. So we're off to the races here in Game 2. Dave has found as many lands as he found in the whole first half of last game, but he's up against another Mana Accelerator in a Turn 1 Elvish Mystic into a Turn 3 Witch Stalker from uh, Garrett, Ouch. because magic is awesome when you when you aren't allowed to interact with your opponent's uh, spells. So, uh, Garrett had Witchstalker in the Sunday seal, and was Mark of the Vampire. Hit. What is Witchstalker's um, it's regular a power? Three thumbs? three. So you can block it occasionally without having mm -hmm. to like. Yeah, it's fragile. It's not like. Um, well, this is very well positioned against Dave because uh, Dave is playing a lot of targeted. Mm -hmm. and not as many bodies. Then we see a root wall come down. I don't feel as bad about cards like Witch Doctor. I, like, they're, they're, they're not unblockable. I mean, it's the stuff that's... Invisible Stalker was miserable to play against. Okay, th I don't understand why they keep printing Hexproof cards, because Hexproof cards just say, target player can't interact with me. Well, you can block it. Invisible Stalker gives it unblockable. Well, well, that's, well I, you're, you're right. But yeah, I, that's, I, that's what I'm saying. Invisible Stalker is miserable, and... Even the the guy from Ravnica, the the four cost flyer, the one that has flying and hexproof, that's kind of that's pretty terrible to deal with. Yeah, mean, meanwhile, Garrett's uh, kind of in here. Doomblade takes out the uh, rotting whatever it is. It's the Juggernaut guy, uh, and then he just beats down after pumping his root wall of four. What do you think? Four, five, six, seven, eight. This is this is this is looking like a game. Yeah. Sometimes, well, it's just very, well, it's, it's sometimes some, you just run into the rock bottom right here, and well, people's elbow gets dropped on you. Some, not some, much <laughs> sometimes you sometimes you get stuck on two lands in the game one, and then yeah. sometimes your opponent plays a three drop on turn two that uh, shouldn't be a magic card. So wait, so if it had shroud, would you be saying the same thing? Yes. So like, you just don't you just don't like the mechanic at all. I don't like any cards that that don't allow you to interact with with something like that. I just think it's bad. I, I think hexproof is particularly bad, but I think shroud in and of itself is is not the greatest thing in the world. It's very ironic that they would they would water down the core set so much in terms of other mechanics that they've done away with and cards that they they've removed, but that they would print another. <laughs> um, hexproof creature. Is is witch talker uncommon? It's a rare. It's a rare. Okay. I mean, it's fine. It doesn't show up all the time, but it's just it's a it's a personal pet peeve. Well, well. They didn't really bring back like the last couple sets. They brought back a mechanic. Like last time, it was uh, exalted. This is slivers. It's supposed to be the mechanic. That brought back. That's, yeah, what, that's what they call it. So they said the mechanic is coming back. So. And uh, Dave uh, thinks about that one for a while. And ends up on an air servant, which is a four-three flyer that taps flyers, so he can at least block uh, something at this point. 
and uh, Garrett's just going to offer the trade with his root wall, up, which Dave doesn't have the uh, luxury of of considering. He has to uh, trade there. See, I'm on, I'm on team Shroud is okay because you can control the power level of the cards that you print with it. And there's a Nightwing shade, yeah. Whereas Hexproof is the problem because Hexproof you can get around the restriction of Oh, my guy can be blocked. Oh, I'm going to put Mark of the Vampire on him, or I'm going to put uh, Spectral Flight on him, or I'm going to do weird stuff. So, yeah. so Flames of the Firebrand are going to take out uh, the Shade while Garrett doesn't have mana to pump it, as well as an Elvish Mystic for value. So Garrett's down to, he's hellbent, he's got a 3-3 three, three and a Lana card. Uh, Garrett is hellbent. Oh, so excuse me. Just drew for the turn there. He played a Scroll Thief. Okay. I mean, Gary's going to attack in here. Dave might consider just not taking it, or taking it, and then, uh, and then, uh, which he does, and then trying to get in there with the scroll thief simply to draw a card, try to draw a fire cat or some other large creature that he can uh, stick in place and block the uh, witch stalker. If Dave can remove the witch stalker, he's in a great spot. Because Garrett's deck is not one that can close out that final five points of damage. If it was the other way around, Garrett would feel <laughs> very, uh, very uneasy. Looks like Dave's on that line of play. So do you, do you, do you give him the extra card? Do you? Uh, if, uh, yeah, no, if I'm Garrett, I chump there. Because the I game, agree, I agree, be, I agree with The you. game could be over relatively soon, and uh, I mean he already has five minutes. But I don't know what cards in his hand. If he has a seven drop in his hand. And then Dave, like a boss, sides into armored Kankrix. <laughs> so he's, he solves the uh, Witch Stalker problem for the time being. What is the stats on that? 2-5. 2-5? Five. 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 Okay. Oh. That, is, that is a sideboarded card. And so Garrett's uh, running out of gas here. Garrett has a, a pretty significant high end. He's got 6 mana, but... Uh, so what happens... What, what's the... Uh, the extra the, text on Witch Stalker? Yes. If your opponent casts a blue or black spell during your turn, it gets a plus 1, plus 1 count. Okay. Gotcha. It's all the cycle of uh, the color. Yeah. Yes. yes, but that's that's the one. It has to... They have to it's a Voice of Resurgence style effect. And Dave's going to go ahead and cast an opportunity. It was very interesting in the draft because uh, I can't remember what card he picked that over, but there was a card that I would have picked, and I asked Dave about it, and he said there's very few cards in this format that he would pick over opportunity yeah. that wasn't a, a bomb rare or something. I think we stopped for needed can't be counted on this I, I feel like I'm just whining about the card that's perfectly fine, but uh, I do not like it. So there's a Brindle Vore, uh, not the most exciting thing for Garrett to find off the top, but it does put another body on the field, so he can effectively attack in uh, at this point. He's going to suicide most of his guys. But uh, Dave is drawing a lot of mana here, but we do know he does have Volcanic Geyser in his deck, so at some point he's going to have a sink for it. Can you split Volcanic Geyser, or is that no. just no? Nope, no. Nope, it's just a fire. Uh, it's just a disintegrate, or whatever you want to call it. X red spells are fireballs. For I don't. Know. I know that functionally it's way different, but and well, they they basically said that it's just, they think players are too stupid to understand fireball. Or, yeah. Here come the cats. <laughs> Double, <laughs> dual fire cat technology. The Dave Snow's rocking here. Tell me that arm doesn't look like it should be hasting. Like it's, they want to fly off the card at you. I uh, Zach, you've known me long enough to know that I think every red card should be hasting. <laughs> <laughs> there is a uh, Mana West Sliver, a little bit uh, too little, too late. It's the portion where Garrett throws a giant ball of yarn on the field and see what happens. <laughs> yes, distract the cats. Try to get through the giant crab. Another land from Dave. For that, don't oh, man. That happened. So what's uh, Garrett's bombs here? You said his high end is good. What's, what are we looking at? Well, he, he has an enlarge, which is fairly... Uh, fairly strong. Uh, I thought he had a Garrick's Horde, but now that I'm thinking of it, that might have been... Uh, he has two Spore Mounds, and I know... I think Yin Sang may have picked up the... Uh, but he has a he has a Liliana's Reaver. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, not very good at this board state, but uh, it's a good card. And there's Archaeomancer. Get back opportunity? Get, get back opportunity. Fantastic. Cast opportunity. Her value. Good grief. Card advantage! So unless Garrett can break through here, uh, basically this is 
this this game hinge, this match hinges on this turn because Garrett really this is his last opportunity to try and force something home because there's no doubt that Dave has drawn the win condition he needs out of the eight cards he's taken off opportunity. Mm -hmm. He has three cards in hand. A land. I think Garrett really needs to really needs to rely on hope and pray right now. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent, excellent split. So Garrett's sending everybody in here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what combat tricks he can have available that would give Trample. Um, I, I, I doubt that Dave is going to let anything through. Dave is not that... Well, our Kamancer's already been used up as a value. So Archaeomancer is barely a creature. You're exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> so you just throw him and don't throw something. Yeah. The Skull Thief is going to try and trade with the Mystic. King Crick's on that, and the Firecat going to try and kill the Witch Stalker. Now, why wouldn't you double block? I guess because there could be a trick, I would say. You could... Well, you don't double block with the 4 1 because all the things that sure. won't kill two 4 sure. 1s, sure. uh, he's, he's unlikely to gotcha. combat trick anyway. So clearly Garrett has some kind of trick here. He wouldn't have done this without it. But I wonder if there's if there's some kind of block that he wasn't expecting that's causing it to not be as good as he previously thought. If Gear if if Dave can get that witch stalker off the board, like Oh Briar Pack. So he's gonna save his witch stalker. And then everything else is going to trade out. The Cankrix will stay. It's a pretty devastating, devastating turn, unfortunately. The, uh, the Archaeomancer is dead, isn't it? Tell them the Archaeomancer is dead. I know, if you block the 1-1, one, one, it's still alive. Well, is it a 1-2? It's a 1-2. One, one, oh, I thought it was a 1-1. One, one. You see, it's not bad. I, I should, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't give it nearly enough credit. <laughs> Brian Bragg, a very strong reprint from, I believe, Dark Ascension. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Brian Bragg Alpha, yes. Body and a, and a combat yep. one. Three three with flash that gives target creature. Okay, Joe, time. thanks for sitting yeah. in. Joe returns to his uh, pod. Pod number two. The super pod is pod number three. So Dave has drawn a thousand cards this game. I'm glad this turned into like a because at first it looked like Dave was going to get blown out by that witch stalker, which did a ton of work uh, with Garrett casting it on turn two off of an elvish mystic. But there's a divination. Dave has a divination, two divinations in his deck. He's already cast and rebought and cast opportunity. So he's drawn an extra eight cards, this t or extra ten cards. That usually gets you there. He's going to mill himself. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what's coming up. Four mana for no time ebb. Time ebb important here because it allows him to get in some incremental damage. It also lets him draw a card with his Merfolk Looter. And I guess now Dave is trying to figure out how much he wants to leave back. Okay, so he's leaving back the Firecat. The Firecat because he wants to try and kill the Witch Stalker. The Witch Stalker. He's gonna draw a card off the merchant skull trigger. So he's actually he's actually drawn twelve extra cards because he has a hit from scroll of Eve and that five mana four. Uh, I, I it's like a I don't know what that card is called, but it's a three three flyer that when it dies you draw a card. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know the name, but okay. Not very helpful right now. I mean, it's fine. It blocks. I'm saying I'm not very helpful about not knowing the name of the card. Uh, Some would argue if ever. <laughs> <laughs> sick, don't worry, we got the first aid kit over here for sick burns. <laughs> we got Corday in there. One day when you need an attorney, you're gonna. Oh no, this is only good. It clearly says for cuts and scrapes <laughs> and for minor burns. <laughs> that was clearly a sick burn. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna third, need the third degree. Someone call an ambulance. Mm -hmm. So there's the Briar Pack that we knew uh, was in his hand. Interesting that he cast it um, pre-combat sorcery speed on his turn, as it does have flash. At some point, Dave's going to be able to fireball him out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he's on a 10-point fireball at this point. I have can... to admit that for a second there, I was like, what are you doing? You're, you're putting your finger on, on the screen. It's going to be weird looking, but... Uh... That's not how cameras work. <laughs> <laughs> how has he not drawn Volcanic Geyser yet? He's drawn a lot of lands. Uh, volcanic Geyser's not even really good at this spot. Um, but he's going to be able to get in for at least three here with his flyer. Which, which would put Garrett dead next turn if he does have the Geyser in his hand.
I mean, to be perfectly honest, he's facing down two three threes, an opponent with two cards in hand that he hasn't been able to use at all. So he's going to he's going to offer up the fire cat to trade with the briar pack here. Now, wouldn't you want to be conservative? What if he gets enlarged and just goes over the top of you right here? I guess fire cat's only got one power, so or one toughness, so it doesn't make a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so Garrett takes it. Does he have enough mana open to to burn him out? One two five six nine. No, he he can put him to one. Four mana for the Canyon Minotaur. 3-3. Three, three. And then five more mana for another 3-3 three, three flyer. Yes. Canyon Minotaur has great flavor. So it, even with Enlarge, like you're talking about, he's got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 power of, of blocks. Toughness. Duress. Flames of the Firebrand. And a and, and Thalia Sea Skite. Garrett just wanted to see what was in his hand because he's dead on the crack back. So Dave digging himself out of a hole here, very impressively, through uh, drawing a million cards. I mean, uh, both both the draws were pretty strong. I mean, Garrett landing the turn three, hexproof guy, and uh, doing a lot of work. Uh, he uh, he also drew his Doomblade, which is probably the best card in any black deck, and uh, but. Uh, not enough, as the top of his deck was unkind. Garrett's playing at that, at that point, basically. I mean, Garrett doesn't have the resource development that Dave has. He can't draw that many cards. He doesn't have that many two-for-ones. Uh, he's just got to get through on the back of solid creatures and just raw removal. So if you had to predict, who are you, ta who are you taking in game three? Well, uh, Dave's both of Dave's draws have been somewhat mediocre. Um, if his deck... Uh, like, the, the removal package is so good. If at any point, uh, you know, Garrett plays an Elvish Mystic into a Mana West lever and then gets Flames of the Fire. Well, yeah. Like yeah. that's I don't think he can he can come back from things like that. But uh, I don't know, Garrett's deck is very strong. He's got uh, he's got a Liliana's Reaver that we've yet to see, mm -hmm. which if that ever connects, yeah. it uh, starts to get out of control. Um, I don't know, it should be interesting. Garrett being on the play is pretty big here though. I think Dave might want the extra I think Dave might be fine with the extra card mm -hmm. in this in this yeah. situation. So it'll be interesting to see how that sorts out. What's, what's going on in the chat today? Everybody's just talking about... Uh, oh, they're pointing out that it's called Messenger Drink, so I appreciate it. Thanks to uh, Nuke and... Uh, Garthix. Garthix D. <laughs> someone, uh, someone also claimed that the burn that you gave me earlier was not really that bad. It was only an ice burn. Whatever that means. Was it ice cold, maybe? Were they talking no, it's an ice burn. Yeah, you can scroll up and see it. Mm -hmm. An ice burn. Uh, one of the cooler things I saw in the pre-release was an opponent who had... Uh, I did not see them at the same time, but he had Ogre Battle Driver, which is very strong. I didn't. I never saw that card. I just saw it after his... Well, Ogre Battle Driver is almost he, good enough to bring you back to standard, right? Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, but uh, what was even cooler is that he had two copies of Hive Stirrings and a Molten Birth. Ah, uh, yep. So, like... With that guy on the field, uh, Hive Stirrings becomes very, very good. Yes. And are you familiar with Molten Birth? I believe that's what it's called. It's the one that makes two elementals. You flip a coin, if you win, you get it back. Ooh, no, I was not familiar with that. He did win the flip, but uh, at the time, I, I was, I was when I'm flipping, putting him away. When I'm flipping coins, I'm hoping that Voltaic Rig is on the field. So. When I'm flipping coins, I'm probably not playing Magic. <laughs> I'm also wondering why I'm flipping coins at the time. Man, Ogre Battle Driver seems like a great card with Young Pyromancer. Yeah, it is. And there's uh, actually a deck that I posted today on the stream's Facebook page at facebook.com slash zacksellsmagic, uh, a Jarvis U article on uh, Gathering Magic where he talks about Young Pyromancer, both in a Burn at the Stake combo build, a deck that uh, Garrett has sleeved up already, not a different take on it, but yes. his own take, uh, as well as a Mono Red Blitz deck that uses Young Pyromancer and uh, Battle Driver and things like that. So no turn one uh, Mystic from Garrett in the deciding game three here. You know how, how behind R&D R is sometimes, though? They were talking in an article on Daily MTG about uh, Ogre Bow Driver plus Lingering Soul. Like, that was going to be a thing for a while. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little slow. I don't, I don't think the decks that want either of those cards want them to... I don't think there's a deck that wants both. Um, so duress right here. Turn two Duress from Garrett. He obviously just drew that. It's going to nab a time ebb, but if I'm Dave... I'm probably pretty good that he's he's nabbing a time ebb with that duress as yes. opposed to some of my more uh, back-breaking spells. And that is just a 2-1, I think it's just a 2-1 Vanilla Flyer. And there is the Brindle Boar. 
So Garrett, not, uh, not much mana acceleration, and just managed a Brindlebore at this point. And there we see a fire cat. I do want to, hold on a second, I'm going to confirm. I knew the jig was up when he didn't attack with it. <laughs> so Garrett adding to his board, so we know, sorry, I know his uh, draw doesn't have a reaver in it, as he would have played it. Here's the Rod of Ruin, uh, which I think is fine. Rod of Ruin is a card that can really, it's a great mana sink. It can really make combat math very difficult, as your creatures always trade up with one, one, one card better. Oh man. Is it the Vampire Warlord? Looks like a 4-2 sack a creature to regenerate it. Sack another creature. Yes, you can't sack it. Templing change. I don't think they like cards in the core set that say sack. You can sack to itself. I remember when I well, first... Well, they, they, they used to, but they don't have, They don't allow it anymore. I remember when I first got back into Magic, I was trying to figure out how in the world you could sack a Viscera Seer to itself. Mm. I remember that happened in the draft uh, when I used to play. But you could scry, right, for that? Yeah. But I was just like, you can't do that. And the guy, I was playing against a guy I would later figure out is very, very much better. Not sure what the point of that is. If someone wanting to point to, to post the link in the chat, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, and so this card is called, I think it's called Hunt the Weak. It's a very strong. Oh, it's yeah. uh, yes. put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature, and then it fights another target creature. So that's going to let him effectively trade with the armored, or not trade, but kill the armored Kangrix. And this game is getting uh, a little bit out of control, as that's uh, now three toughness on that. Uh, he on still that, flames it, right? Yeah, he still flames it, but he's not, the first removal spell isn't going to kill it. Oh, okay, the Grindelboer right there. Yes. Dave by no means out of it here, but... Uh, in a pretty interesting spot. Now, interestingly enough here, uh, Garrett, he can attack with the Brindlebore, but Dave is more than likely going to trade his 1-3 and the Rod, and, uh, Rod of Ruin activation mm. to kill him. There's a pre-combat mana with Sliver, because we're trying to uh, have extra creatures to uh, sack to the, uh, the Warlord. It's very important now, too, because Dave can't even uh, Volcanic Geyser it, because he'll just regen it twice. Yeah. Now, it might be worth trading a Volcanic Geyser for both of Garrett's other creatures, but... Um, I think you got to gotta, you gotta say no blocks right here and hope to hope to change your position with another draw. Well, well, I really don't know what that... Um, or what, what that 1-3 is going to do at this point. It might be worth just saving the 5 life. Looks like... Oh, and it, brutally enough, Dave does have the Volcanic Geyser in his hand and the mana he needed to have killed it. Now, he could have done that in uh, response. Wait, is Geyser's not an instant? Why am I thinking Geyser's an instant? That's my bad. But Dave decides he's going to go ahead and take it. So can he... Oh, and there's another Brindle board, but uh, Garrett's helmet now, so we'll see... Uh, so he can he can assassinate the, uh, he's the mana whistler with the Rod of Ruin, right? Yeah, kill the mana whistler. Yeah. <laughs> go, go ahead and play correctly in the uh, sack it tier guy. So he draws another land here. What's the what's the butt on those boars? Two. They're two twos. Oh, they're, just, they're, they're just bears. Life gain bears, right? Mm -hmm. So Garrett's drawn a card that's alive here, I think. No, he's not going to attack with everything. That seems wrong to me. We're flashing in Sea Skite. With enough mana up open to... And he's going to just go ahead and chump it. He has enough mana to activate Rod. <laughs> oh, well, I understand what happened there. He's, uh, he's, the Sea Skite's not enough to kill it, but Dave activating the, ha the Rod of Runa in a turn, forcing him to sack another Brindlebore. And there's another 3-3 three, three Drake, so uh, just much like, much, uh, it's almost exactly like last game. It's for some reason I have Dave at 17 left. Uh, Dave's managing to stabilize at just the, just the right time. Well, card advantage and removal makes a good control deck, right? Yeah, well, he hasn't drawn an extra card or uh, or killed anything so far. Rod ruined kills. Rod, yeah, Rod is doing a lot of work. Oh, Dave, Geyser isn't it, so we were wrong. 
It still wouldn't have worked at that point because of uh, Stark's leaves. Winter is coming. And so Dave uh, trading, Dave trading his uh, messenger Drake for the uh, Elvish Mystic with the same uh, same block and uh, same block and sack to regen trick. But Dave continues to well. This time he finds a divination, so this is going to be a little bit more diff, a little bit tougher for him as he only has four mana open. He's not going to be able to play a guy and uh, leave Rod mana open. He is not dead on the way back though. But he could uh, could he could block and try to force Garrett to sack out the boar, and then drop down to two if he doesn't add anything to his board from the Vampire Warlord. Scotty, did you win? I did. Who'd you play? Alex. Of course he won. He's got Shiv and Dragon in his deck. That's the best card of all time. Best card ever printed in 1994. That's that's exactly how you draw up your draft deck, right? If I can just draw Lava Axe. <laughs> when you're running three of them, uh, it's probably a pretty, pretty good strategy. And so this is the turn that Dave's going to decide to pull the trigger on the Volcanic Geyser. Now, it's not going to kill the creature he wants it to kill, but he is going to fog as the regeneration ability will yes. remove it from combat. We saw him do that to good effect in game one, though it was not enough. Another lamb from Dave. Two cards in his hand. I can't make them out. One is a flames, and there he finally gets rid of it. That's, that seems backbreaking right there against Garrett. Well, Garrett has two cards in his hand, but if they were something he could cast, I'm sure he would have done it earlier. We cast a uh, Air Servant, which is going to close the game out pretty quickly, and Dave feels comfortable enough to start attacking with his 1-3. Passes back to Garrett. I, I, say, I want to say he's stuck on 6 land, because I feel like he has a 3... Three drop, and there we see Winchstalker again. Dave just cannot get get past that Winchstalker. Well, he's got a fire, doesn't he? Yeah, but he, it's, yeah, but he'll have to trade his his, his air server with it. Nah, yeah, he's yeah, and a Doom Blade to take. I wonder. It's interesting that I think I feel like Garrett's been holding that Doom Blade because I feel like he would he would have played the. I don't feel like he would have played the Winchstalker in a previous turn if he'd had it. So. uh... So Garrett drawing a... Once yeah. we thought Dave had stabilized... Very precarious the, position now. Mm -hmm. So right, uh, Dave is only uh, 18 Rod of Ruin activations away before knocking Garrett out, so... <laughs> He's just going to pass back, so he might be in chump block mode here with that 1-3. That's, that, in fact, is uh, not where we're at yet. He's going to go ahead and take and drop down to four. Seventeen more activations. It's a two-turn clock for Dave. Uh, but we know that he's got plenty of uh, cards in his, in his deck that can effectively block. Dave deciding, does he want to go to one? He feels comfortable going to one. Draws another card. Looks like a divination here. No, it's an opportunity. So drawing four cards here, so great spot to be in. But slowly falling behind here, all the way down to one. But we find a scroll thief. That at least gives him something to block with. Dave doesn't feel comfortable attacking here as he is dead to any removal spell should he attack with one of his creatures. Nah, I can draw an extra card though if he, if he has a creature or some way that something... I don't know if he would feel comfortable attacking or not at this point. We see an Archaeomancer, which normally would be great here. Yeah. But against this stupid uh, <laughs> X-proof wolf... It's not as good as you would like it to be. Now, he can still rebuy his geyser, which might be the correct play anyway. No, he's just going to dig for more cards. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's going to cast it again. So two games in a row, we're going to see Dave draw eight cards off of that opportunity. No. He's going to load up with another scroll thief. Yeah, he can draw one just from his... Oh, he's not swinging in. He doesn't want the card. No. Because at, at this point, he can triple... He can gang block. Briar Pack Alpha is going to be a huge blowout here. Yeah. But I, I don't think Dave can. I don't think Dave can really afford not to do that. So he's going to get to keep one, but he's uh, he's dead on board as it sits. So let's see if he can come up with anything. He's got two three threes and an opportunity if he needs to. Dave does. Anyway. Yeah. Looks like he has a Flames of the Firebrand in his hand, which will take care of the uh, Briar Pack Alpha. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this has been some pretty good magic in these, yeah, <laughs> these games. Yeah, this has been... You got your money's worth for this. So we're going to see the Opportunity cast. With six man open, I don't think Dave has played a land yet, so he's just giving himself... As many options as available. He has the he has Flames of Firebrand in his hand that will deal with the Briar Pack Alpha. Um, but just trying to decide if he can add something. There's a Fire Cat. That seems like a good play. And then he's going to... No, he's playing another Fire Cat. So at this point, Garrett can not really af afford to attack in. <coughs> he needs two removal spells or an Enlarge here. An Enlarge wins the game. Dave is just dead to Enlarge at any point. And he just passes back, so Dave may have stabilized again. Of course, we said that once before. Yeah, this has been some pretty back and forth. This is this is the magic you pay to see. <laughs> yes, this is very much worth the zero uh, dollar cost of admission. Exactly. To, to the uh, Zach Sells Magic Ink Play Mads Affinity for Cards dot com. I'd pay I, I would pay a hundred percent more than I currently paid for this. So Flames of the Firebrand targeting. Um, just the Briar Pack Alpha as Garrett looks through his sideboard. If it targeted the Witch Doctor, it would be uh, cheating. So, um. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Garrett, oh, Garrett's just taking all of this. So, what's important here is that Garrett's on a one turn clock now. There's a Messenger Drake and a Marauding, whatever that thing is. No, Canyon Minotaur. Canyon Minotaur. Wouldn't it be faster to go through the valley? No. So, Garrett, I think he's trying to think of what his outs are. Wow, we, we, were just, we were talking about Dave being dead. And well, now I, th I think the Garrett's drawn a live one. Elvish Mystic. Let's see, he can block he can block the three and one of the fours, but he, no, Garrett's taking threes in the air, and one of those fire... Uh, either a fire cat or the Candy Minotaur and Scroll Thief are getting through. Garrett needs another creature or removal spell, and looks like he does have at least some kind of removal spell. And to be perfectly honest and limited, I would make him play it out anyway, because like yeah. there's enough combat tricks that you know you someone will make a uh, suboptimal play. Absolutely. Uh, so if you're Dave here, you kill kill the uh, <laughs> Dave has five cards left. You use the Rod of Ruin to divinate. <laughs> He's gonna deck himself. <laughs> Looking for a burn spell. That would be a suboptimal play. <laughs> yep. Uh, you use three mana here to kill the Elvish Mystic. Oh, is, does Garrett have a fog? Ooh, yes. Does Garrett have a fog? Uh, but if there's anyone in this shop that is capable of playing around the fog, I think it's Dave. So you attack with your yeah, you attack with those three. Does Garrett have Does Garrett have a removal spell? He does not. Three lands in his hand. Three very excellent games of Magic. Yes, Even the first game in which Dave was a little bit mana screwed ended up being a pretty good game. Both games Garrett put on a tremendous amount of pressure early, and then Dave somehow found a way. It's not somehow found a way. He drew a thousand cards. Dave uh, cast Opportunity. Because, in those three games, he cast it four times. Oh. So you could say.